today's chapter is titled Unraveling. And the excerpt I'm going to share with you um, speaks beautifully to the title of the book, uh, title of this chapter, Unraveling. So where we left off was I do get Gidget on medication for her seizures, which do um, in the long run actually help her to no longer have seizures, which is actually a very big relief. Um, so that was in that was in the month of December when I had started her on the medication, and that was after 11 months of trying, you know, the natural approach um, and fighting the fact of putting her on the med medication because I just didn't know how that would react to her body and if it was the best thing to do. So it was taking a toll. So that's the part I'm going to. I'm going to pick up with. I'm going to have lunch with my mom um, to celebrate Christmas and not realizing that um, I am going to have my unraveling moment here. So I was feeling the stress of caring for special needs dogs for so long, nine years at that point. Other than a four month break in between Frankie's passing and adopting Joey, then another before adopting Gidget, it had been nonstop and I was beginning to feel exhausted from it all. I was also the primary care caretaker for Kylie, our English yellow Labrador. Kylie had been a laid back and, not, and low maintenance dog, but at 10 years old, she was beginning to slow down from arthritis and would need more care moving forward. I, was told my I also told my mom about my awkward conversation with Dr. Benner about the Chinese herbs. Though we, had no, though we had to smooth over the situation, I was still struggling with the feelings of being judged with regard to my decisions about Gidget's care. Perhaps, Mom said, when Gidget is gone someday, you will need to take a break. I broke down crying. But who will take care of all the special needs dogs then? Anyone listening to me would have thought I had taken care of every special needs dog in the world, or at least those with IVDD, which is intervertebral disc disease. The reality was that Gidget was only the third special needs dog I'd brought into my life, but it felt like I had taken care of so many more. My mom wasn't the first person I had told of my exhaustion either. In fact, I had been saying the same thing to John and close friends for several months. What I wouldn't realize until two years later was, was the full weight of the responsibility I felt to take care of these dogs. If I didn't continue to do this, who would? What would happen to those dogs who needed help? I couldn't bear the thought. But in the moments I was alone and honest with myself, I began to picture a life when I was not taking care of a dachshund with IVDD. It was a struggle to hear myself think in this way, and there were times when I was consumed by guilt. For all the inner work I had done at this point and my continued commitment to living a self-examined life, I still had moments of worrying about uh, what others thought about me and my choices. So I would continue I would continue to work to work with these feelings and um, and I'll just give you a little insight as we go through the chapters. This would end up becoming my never-ending story um, of feeling shame around the things I felt and feeling guilt of the feelings I was having. Um, but as I would realize, um, as and I'm just going to share this last little excerpt here from this chapter, the more layers I peeled away, the more I wondered whether this was a part of Gidget's teaching and why she had come into my life. Was she an animal oracle guiding me to the next phase of my journey? And she indeed was um, definitely that and so much more and um, why I'm feeling called really. Um, I'm looking at her picture here on my desk that still sits here, um, even though she's been gone almost two years now. Um, but it's why I'm feeling called to share excerpts from my book at this time is because she was such a part, huge part of my healing journey. And um, we all have the choice to heal or not to heal. And um, animals are here to help us. And there's so many other signs and symbols in our life that are calling out to us to help, help us examine those things that which um, we know in our heart need to be healed. And uh, hopefully by sharing these excerpts, it's giving you courage um, to look at that for yourself and to start take steps 
start taking the steps towards your own self-healing journey as well. All right, I'll be back tomorrow with, I know I already said I had a favorite chapter, but this is a favorite chapter also, um, chapter 11, which is called White Wolf Laola. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.